This video will describe choosing and loading tubing in the Watson Marlow 720 and similar series peristaltic pumps. I'm John Ritchie from Western Separations and we are your Watson Marlow representatives for most of the Western U.S. Our contact info, as well as the other companies that we represent, is in the description below. Watson Marlow pumps are designed primarily around tubing wall thickness. This is a little different. Each model is designed to work with a specific tubing wall thickness, independent of the inner diameter of the tubing. The pumps are designed to look for, in a sense, a particular wall thickness. This pump, the 720 and similar series, come from the factory designed for 4.8 millimeter wall thickness tubing. It's the same as 3 16th inch. The air gap in the pump between the pump rotor and the lid is set for this. Two 4.8 millimeter walls that are compressed together give a distance that looks like that. And that's what the pump is designed to look for. That's why the ID is not important, the wall thickness is. Here's an example of different wall thickness. This tubing is 3.2 millimeter wall thickness, or 1 8 inch. And you can see the difference between 1 8 and 3 16 3.2 millimeters, and 4.8 millimeters. Because each pump is designed for a specific wall thickness, and this particular pump is designed for 4.8 millimeter wall thickness, there's a couple of things to watch out for when you're choosing tubing and loading tubing in this pump. This pump comes, as I mentioned, designed for 4.8 millimeter wall thickness tubing. And one of the ways that you can tell that is on these adjustment knobs. And if you can't see it in the video, I'll put a still photo into the video. They're labeled 4.8 millimeters. And that tells you the wall thickness that this particular pump is designed for. 4.8 millimeter wall thickness tubing is not very common. Oftentimes operators will see this pump and will grab a more common tubing, which is the 3.2 millimeter wall thickness tubing. An issue can happen with this pump when you try to run 3.2 millimeter wall thickness tubing in this head, which is designed for 4.8 millimeter wall thickness. What happens is because this is a smaller distance, and the pump is designed to look for, you will either get the tubing walking through the head when you operate the pump, or you'll get very little flow or, or no flow. Sometimes operators have tried to solve this problem by taking these adjustment knobs and removing the set screw in the middle of the knob. This is a mistake. The set screw is here so that when you tighten this knob after you've installed the tubing, the set screw stops at a defined distance that's based on the wall thickness of the tubing. If you remove the set screw, this now has no limit to its travel. It will appear to solve the problem because you can get the wrong wall thickness tubing to work in this pump, but because there's no limit to the travel of this knob, you can over tighten it and cause an over torque issue. What ends up happening is operators that are trying to use the wrong wall thickness tubing in this pump will frequently have something like this happen. Because they over tighten it, they place a greater amount of torque on the pump motor and they actually can burn the motor out with an over torque issue. And we routinely get two or three pumps a year returned to Watson Marlow with these set screws removed and with an over torque error. And it's very easy to avoid. There are customers that purchase the 720 pump and would like to use 3.2 millimeter wall thickness tubing. That is possible. Watson Marlow does offer these adjustment knobs labeled for 3.2 millimeter wall thickness. They are uh, longer and allow the, head to be, the lid to be pushed down further, which allows you to compress the walls of the 3.2 millimeter tubing. So you can purchase the correct adjustment knobs so that the 3.2 millimeter tubing will operate perfectly fine. You don't need to remove the set screw and you'll have a defined distance so 
so you don't create an over torque issue on the motor. If you do decide to purchase the 3.2 millimeter adjustment knobs, there is one other thing to take a look at in order to, to switch over to 3.2 millimeter wall thickness tubing. And if you can't see it in the video, again, I'll put a still. There's a, a little bushing here and on the other side, and you simply flip it down for 4.8 millimeters, up for 3.2. And again, this may be difficult to see, so we'll put a still photo if you can't see it in the video. You just flip that bushing, you change the knob, and you're good to go with the thinner wall, 3.2 millimeter wall thickness tubing. Assuming that you have the right tubing chosen, let me show you how to install it. So again, once you, uh, you have the lid, you, you pull this, this uh, rod out, pull these clamps out very easy when there's no tubing, they come out very easily. And we're going to install a piece of tubing that has the 4.8 millimeter wall thickness as, the pump is, as this particular pump is set for. You lay the tubing across the head. And you loosely put these tightening clamps in. <coughs> Let's assume in this example that you're going to pump clockwise. You're going to pump in this direction. This will be the suction side of the pump. This clamp needs to be tight. You don't need to use a tool to tighten it. There's no hammer needed or anything like that. You can just tighten it with your hand. But you want to tighten it very snug. Tubing will stretch as it's used in the head. The head creates friction against the tubing. The tubing heats up. And as the tubing heats up, it stretches. If you tighten both sides very, very tight on this head, as the tubing stretches, it can't go anywhere. It will migrate and frequently migrate towards these gears in the back of the pump head. The gears can chew through the tubing, and you end up losing tubing integrity, losing process fluid, you have a rupture. The easy way to avoid that is when you're installing the tubing, uh, again, for this example, we'll assume pumping in a clockwise direction, but it can be the other way as well. The suction side, you tighten. Again, no tools, just as tight as you can with your hand. The output side, you leave a little bit loose so the tubing has an opportunity to move this way. As the tubing stretches, as it heats up and stretches, it's just going to be able to move out this way. It will not migrate towards the gears, and you'll end up with longer tubing life. Once you've got these clamps set, put the lid on, install the threaded rod. When you install the threaded rod, Do not use any tools. Do not use a hammer uh, or any other tools to tighten it. You do run the risk of stripping the threads here in the back of the head if you tighten this too much. Good finger tight and it's good to go. Now, you have the knobs and they have their set screws untouched. So you know they're going to stop when they need to stop. You install these two knobs. The set screw will stop when they are tight enough. Again, no tools are needed. That has stopped. This has stopped. You're now ready to pump. Any questions? Our contact info is below. Thanks for watching.